Most of us know about the Kevin LePage incident or Mark Martin giving this win away, but what about the lesser known moments within the sport? It's time that we discover some of those today. Dave Blaney was riding in the back of the pack near the end of the 2007 Daytona 500, and as he saw a cluster of cars bouncing off each other through his windshield, he decided to pull down pit road to try to avoid a wreck. Um, Raw Gator, that's actually a 200 IQ move. He must be really smart to react that quickly to avoid getting wrecked. But what I have not yet told you is that he flew through pit road at over 150 miles per hour. If he was certain that there would be a wreck, he should have slowed down to minimize the danger of everyone in the pit. But that's not even the worst part. Dave Blaney's right front tire was down and although he wanted to merge back on the track with everyone else, he executed this poorly and became the reason for the caution itself. That's right, it was a smart play to head down pit road in case there was a wreck, but failing to slow down and noticing that his tire was down only led to a situation that ended his race and the race of a few others. This is exactly what had this moment doing a complete 180 in just 10 seconds. Pit lane, here's what I don't think he realizes. He's got a flat right front tire. 150 miles an hour. Blaney is trying to scrub off speed. And just nowhere for Ken Schrader, the 21 car, to go. Martin Truex made the final four to battle for the championship in 2019. After starting third, he quickly became the dominant car of the day, leading a significant portion of the first 100 laps. However, on lap 121, something went incredibly wrong. Drix comes in for a pit stop and, well, nothing seems out of the ordinary at first, and even as a spectator, you wouldn't have noticed anything in the span of about 13.7 seconds. But the second Drix pulled out of his pit stall, he sure did. The left and right front tires were in the incorrect places. With the tire holding the wrong air pressure, everything would be affected, from handling to pure speed. It seemed like this mistake in a championship race was really going to cost them, but luckily it didn't. Truex started in the top 5 of the final stage and was runner up to his teammate and champion Kyle Busch. I went to this race and I really couldn't believe it. I've really never heard of this situation happening before. David Gilliland was racing at Charlotte in 2009 where he tried to make this four wide pass in the tri-oval. I think this poses a question if four wide can even be achieved through this section of the track. When we look at Gordon, Bush, and Newman attempt to go three wide in the 2009 all-star race, it didn't even work out there. And I'm willing to bet it's possible with the 550 horsepower package NASCAR has used in races in recent years. In fact, I think I've seen it done before, but ask any iRacer and they'll be able to tell you three wide is quite a challenge in itself and four wide is pretty unimaginable. Imaginable. And this leads me to a quick question for all of you. What is your favorite NASCAR racing game all time? Comment below and I'll make a big chart with all of this data and post the results over on my Twitter. Make sure to follow it so you don't miss it when it comes out because your voice matters. Do you remember the time when Quinn Hoff tried pitting from the second lane at Texas just a few years ago? Well it turns out that JJ Yaley created this move 14 whole years earlier. Yaley was trying to pit but Mark Martin behind him had no idea. And this might have been okay if Yaley was slow and was already on the lowest lane of the the track, Mark might have been able to slide up and react, but what really caused the confusion was that Yaley attempted to slow down in the middle of the track. This makes it appear as if he has some sort of issue with the car, and the last thing Mark was expecting was for Yaley to turn right into him. I just know that Formula 1 fans would be laughing at NASCAR for this one. Box, 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 box. Usually when I pit, I get on the inside of the racetrack and then come off, you know, but uh... Although we talked about the 2019 championship finale at Homestead a few minutes ago, something else unthinkable happened in that race too. Denny Hamlin's pit crew put an oversized piece of tape on the grill to try to gain a competitive advantage. The thing was, the piece of tape was indeed too big. It's entirely possible that the tape could have just been misplaced, but I've never even seen a piece of tape this big be put on a grill of a race car. A few laps later, Hamlin was called to the pits to correct the mistake and prevent his car from blowing up. This water shooting from the hood? Yeah, that's not good. Just about any NASCAR fan would be able to look at this and know that something clearly isn't right. But man, look at all that water is losing, Steve. I don't know how long that thing could last when he's gonna go back out on the racetrack. 
Blocking is a natural part of NASCAR racing, but Alex Bowman was leading a race at Talladega and decided to pull one on Joey Logano, the last guy you should try blocking in my opinion. A difference of at least 5 miles an hour between the two meant that Bowman's car was not going to like this contact very much. Sure enough, the second he's hit, he glides to the apron, and the transition upset his car so much that he completely lost control and spun himself in front of the whole entire field. I get it, do what you gotta do to try to win the stage, but the chances of a 5 mile an hour bump not roughing you up is little to none. I guess it's easy to correct Bowman on his mistake in hindsight, and I have to confess that I probably would have made the same move. Yeah, you have to be you know, aggressive and block, but you also have to realize, I guess, when the run is so massive behind you, you're just not gonna win. You may remember Kyle Busch's restart from the 2011 preseason race I mentioned just a few videos ago. But did you know that Denny Hamlin actually screwed himself out of winning that race? He jumped out of line with Newman just before reaching the finish line, and although Newman gave him enough room, Hamlin decided to pass him below the yellow line. This yellow line, this is a penalty in NASCAR. And no, it is not legal on the last lap. Actually, I think that. it's legal on the last lap. I understand that late race moments may cause you to forget about the rules and throw them out the window completely, but the yellow line rule is one that gets mentioned constantly at restrictor play racetracks. Here they come, three wide to the stripe, and the winner is three wide, three probably wide, Kurt Busch because Denny Hamlin went below the yellow line. Yeah, that that was definitely, he, he advanced his position by being out of bounds. There's no question on that. Jennifer Jo Cobb was riding in the back of the pack of Daytona when this huge crash happened in front of her. Although all the drivers in the same area were able to slow down and avoid getting damage, Cobb tried to do her best Lightning McQueen impression to avoid the wreck. This reminds me of the wreck avoidance challenges in NASCAR 09. I could go on with the video game references because this is commonly what happens in online racing. And that's why you always have to know how much room. Wow, Jennifer Jo Cobb coming in there hot. Kyle Busch's team was on the wrong end of a pit strategy for Nashville in 2022, and before the caution came out, he was likely looking at a top 5, or possibly even a win. If you know anything about Kyle Busch at all, you'd know that he hates to lose. He put this on display when he started straight up wall riding in the final laps of the race. He literally did not care anymore and fully stopped trying. Busch lost actual positions on the racetrack by doing this, but when you look at the amount he already lost to this strategy, I'm sure he really didn't care. Did you know that there was a NASCAR race that technically the drivers willingly did not qualify for? In the group qualifying era, the 12 drivers that advanced to the second round of qualifying waited until the clock ran out to about 40 seconds to even attempt a lap. The thing about this was, no one wanted to be the first car on the track. This poses a big disadvantage as the lead car won't have any draft. After every driver insisted that someone else went first, they all left the pits too late and not a single one of them posted a lap time. Even though this video is all about low IQ moments, I'll stop myself from blaming this on the drivers. Group qualifying simply didn't work well with the racing package NASCAR used at the time. Two, one, Nobody made it! Nobody made it across the line. I mean, the lesson was supposed to be learned in California when we made ourselves look like idiots out there. I always think it's cool that so many of you guys watch my videos, and if you want to subscribe, the option is always there, but it's never required. YouTube says you'll like this video next. I hope you enjoy it.